Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I am Mr. Dean Kovald, and in today's uh, lesson, I will be going over uh, exact numbers and significant figures. Uh, this should be a relatively short video. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, what are exact numbers? Exact numbers are going to be numbers that are um, you're not measuring them, so they're not measurements. So uh, an example of uh, an exact number would be counting numbers. Okay, so counting. So <clears throat> these would be discrete numbers where um, all I did is I counted a number of things. You didn't measure it out, you just counted. Like, so I can count the number of people in a room. That's not measuring the people in a room. Um, um, if I if I know how many yards are in a football field, I can count, and it's a hundred yard football field. One, two, three, four, five, and I can say it's a hundred yard football field. Did I measure out the yards? No. Uh, so that would be an exact number. Um, so anytime it's counting, or in a problem, for example, if they say um, how many, um, let's say you're given the example of um, a certain enzyme can um, convert uh, one substance into another in like you know 5.0 you know or 50,000 per minute right um, and then they ask you uh, how many molecules can be converted in 35 minutes right the, the 35 minutes that they're giving you is not a measured amount of time. It's, it's just a given amount of time, and it's counted. So they just say 35 minutes, right? Um, so that would be an exact number, whereas the 5,000 molecules per minute, that's a measure. And the reason that's a measure is because you are comparing two different units to each other, right? So you're taking a unit of time, minutes, and relating it to like how many molecules or a number of molecules, right? So you're relating those two together, and that would be a measure, not not a uh, not not an exact uh, number. But the the 35 minutes that they gave you in the problem that would not that would not be a measure. That's something that they gave you, um, and it's it's uh, it's a counted amount of numbers in a way. Um, so. Counting, anything that's counted is going to be uh, exact. Um, defined relationships, anything that is defined to be uh, uh, one thing and another is going to be uh, an exact relationship. So what do I mean by that? Um, so for example, uh, we went over our metric units before. So um, if you're not familiar with the metric units and the metric prefixes and stuff like that, go back to my other uh, video where I cover uh, the metric prefixes and the prefix multipliers. But the, um, the relationship, so if I know that one, um, one kilometer is equal to 10 to the third meters, this is a defined relationship. This is true by definition, mainly because kilo means a thousand and kilometer is a thousand meters. So by definition, one kilometer is going to be a thousand meters. This is not a measured, uh, this is not a measured relationship. It's a, it's a defined relationship. So, and this, uh, this applies for any relationship between two metric units that are of the same category. So two length units, to time units, so seconds and milliseconds, or you have grams and micrograms, so they're both mass metric mass units. Um, so anytime you're, you're, you are comparing those metric units, it's gonna be an exact relationship, and then, so you don't have to worry about uh, significant figures. And I'll, I'll talk more a little, uh, about that in a minute. So this also goes for English to English. So everyone hopefully is aware that one foot is equal to 12 inches, right? So this is the English measurement of length. This is also an English measurement of length. 
and this is true by definition. So 12 inches is equal to one foot by definition. They didn't measure it out and get that. Um, so that's going to be exact. So anytime you have English, English units that are related to each other in the same category, length and length and, and, and mass and mass and whatever, um, that's going to be exact same with metric. Anytime you have a metric to English relationship, then it's going to be a measure and it's not an exact relationship. So that would be an example of if you have 450, I think it's 53.6 grams is equal to one pound. Right. So this grams is a metric unit. Pounds is an English unit. This would be a measure. This is not exact. So you can increase or decrease the precision of this based on your measuring tool. Okay, so then you would have to pay attention to the sig figs for this because it's not exact. Um, so this is not exact, um, but these are exact. There is one, um, there is, there's one, um, Example where this does not hold uh, where you do have English to metric relationship, but it is it is exact because it's true by definition and that is the one uh, One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters this Even though you have metric to English This is an exact relationship. So um the number of significant figures here uh, would not be would be ignored in your calculation if you use this. Um, and then the last thing is um, basically numbers that are uh, how should I how should I put this? Um, these are going to be uh, interval numbers numbers. Integral numbers in an equation, right? So, for example, uh, the, the diameter is, e uh, excuse me, the radius is equal to the diameter <coughs> over 2. So, that 2 is exact. Um, when you're doing your temperature, so if you do, um, uh, degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 times the degrees Celsius plus 32. These numbers are exact. Um, this is just the difference between the scales. I talked about where this comes from in an earlier video on the temperature scales. Um, <clears throat> so these, this value is just a, a fraction, 9 over 5. This is just the difference between the scales. So these are going to be exact numbers. You're not going to worry about significant figures when you're doing calculations with, with uh, those equations. So um, now, why is this important? It's important with regard to sig figs, especially when you're doing calculations um, involving measurements and you're going, going to take different measurements and you're multiplying and dividing them or you're adding and subtracting um, with other numbers and you want to know whether those other numbers are exact or not because if they are exact then the, what we say is they have an infinite number of significant figures so you your relationship or your answer that you get I should say from the calculation can only be as good as your least uh, your, your least precise Measurement. So we, you've, you've heard the adage, um, the team is only as strong as its weakest link, or the, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link, right? So your answer in the calculation, when you're, you're taking your measurements and you're doing some mathematical calculations to get another answer, um, the answer you get can only be as precise as the least precise measurement you used in the calculation, right? So, um, 
So if you're using exact numbers in your calculations, then those numbers are going to have an infinite number of significant figures. So they're not going to be the least number of significant figures. They're, they're not going to have the least number of significant figures, so therefore you don't have to worry about them. So if you're multiplying by some sort of counting number, if you're or if you're adding and abstracting by some sort of counting number, then you don't have to worry about the sig figs. You could ignore them in uh, as far as figuring out how many sig figs your answer should be. You still need to use it in your calculation, right? But at the end of your calculation, when you're trying to figure out how many sig figs your answer should have, um, when you go back to the numbers that you added and subtracted and multiplied and divided, um, you're going to ignore the counting numbers as far as sig figs go. Same thing with any relationship you use. So um, in conversion factors, we're going to use these relationships to create conversion factors. And then when you use that conversion factor to convert from one unit to the other, if it's an exact relationship, then you don't have to worry about it. So you can ignore them as far as sig figs go. Um, and then if you have numbers in your e equations, you can ignore those as well as far as, as far as sig figs. So you can ignore all the exact and then look only at the measurements that you used in your calculations and then you can figure out um, how many sig figs or how many decimal places your answer should have. Um, so in the next video, uh, we'll start to get into um, how to use these, uh, cal how to do these calculations um, or how to figure out significant figures doing certain kinds of calculations like multiplying and dividing, adding and subtracting. Um, Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful and uh, see you next time.